But after we had the vehicle blasted, we realized that to do it right and do it the Detroit Speedway, we had to install some new ones. How's it going everyone? Alex from Detroit Speed, back with another project vlog video. Today's video is gonna be kinda of short. All the guys that are at lunch right now, so I'm gonna breeze through the project shop right now and give you a quick update on what everyone's working on. Previously, Jason was doing all of the wiring on John 69C10 here, and Austin and Michael have completed all of the paintwork on Chris's 66 Mustang. So now, we have the bed off of John's C10, and they're going to be prepping this for paint. So it's already an epoxy. They're gonna do their body work, get everything set up, set the gaps, and just do everything that we do in the paint and body shop. While the bed is off, I can kind of give you a better look at the suspension setup on this truck. This is using our X-Gen Universal Quadrilink. The upper and lower link that come in the kit are actually not welded when you receive them. Uh, there is a two foot length and a four foot length, and these ends come separate, not welded to the rod. So what you do is you set your link length, whatever you're looking for, whatever wheelbase you're trying to achieve, and then it slides into your upper link and your lower link, the two foot and four foot, and then you can weld it together. So, like I said, they're universal. So you can put them in various different applications. Paul went ahead and made the link pockets for the front, and then we have our universal non-staggered bracket on the rear, and this utilizes our C7 full floater kit as well. So that's a Corvette style hub pack, floater axle, so great for serviceability and then of course custom c-notch and these are just mock-up shocks we'll have some jri's on there but i think what's really unique about this truck is uh the exhaust routing too up and over the axle around the tank it's packaged very very nice of course those are hooker vr304 mufflers uh what we've been using on pretty much everything recently all stainless hard line fuel lines and of course boxed in the frame as well just for a little bit of a uh, rigidity but that's pretty much all we have right now for the C10 uh, we will keep you updated in weeks to come as uh, Austin and Michael get to doing the paint and body work on this the color is gonna be pretty unique I don't have a sample to show you just yet but the owner has decided to go with a satin blue so it'll be a little different so looking forward to show you more of that I will be heading back over to the paint and body side to show you more parts of Chris's Mustang, but we have plenty more LED lights over in the assembly side, and I think the Wimbledon white shows a lot better over here than it did in the previous video. Like we mentioned, it's a creamy off-white, and I think it just looks so good, and really the video probably will not do this car justice at all. Man, it looks good. Look at that. One of our favorite parts, the red in the interior with the satin finish. Speaking of satin, we did something a little different on this car that we don't normally do in projects. So we'll go back over the paint side and I'll show you that. All right, we were looking to be a little unique with this one. Normally, the deck lid and hood on these cars from the factory, they're body color. So we went ahead and did the underside of them in body color, but it has a flat clear on it. So the underside of the deck lid and the hood are flat, while the top side has a gloss finish to it. So just a little something different. So I think it's just another little unique touch on this build that'll make it different from everything else that we've done in the past. Another key part to this build has been painted as well. This is the Roush Yates engine that was originally in our 66 Mustang test car that Chris purchased and now it will be going in his car. So the engine block is painted all black. A little bit of contrast from the satin black kind of flat black engine bay color. And then this really awesome intake cover that Josh Smith made. And we also have valve covers to match. We don't have those right now. They're still being worked on, but they will be going on here shortly. And the finish on this is kind of a 
wrinkle texture. So that'll look really awesome sitting on top of our Luma frame in the engine bay. So that's all I really wanted to show you for Chris's car. The hood, the engine, the deck lid. Now, what I'll do is roll over to the fab side of the shop and show you what progress those guys have been making. All right, over in the fab side, we're gonna start with Andy's Camaro and work our way over. But before we start talking about the car here, I wanna walk over to our parts room and show you something that we received for this car last week. We have it tucked away right now, just sitting in storage until Josh gets to that part of his build. But this is an LT4 supercharged crate motor from Chevrolet Performance that will be going in Andy's Camaro. Uh, we also have a T56 that'll go right behind it. So we'll have to modify the tunnel and make all of that fit. But of course, as you know, these LT4 engines came in the C7Z06s. Plenty of power for this car. So we're excited to get that going. Previously on this car, Josh had cut the tubs out and cut back for our mini tub kit and then installed the frame rail closeouts on. And now he has the cross member installed into the car so he can mock up his shock location, get the upper shock mounts installed, welded onto it, and then continue to knock out the rest of the Quadrilink kit. And for Kevin's GTO this week, we had mentioned in previous videos how the quarters needed to be replaced. We thought the patch from before, a couple owners ago, may have been good enough, but after we had the vehicle blasted, we realized that to do it right and do it the Detroit Speedway, we had to install some new ones. So we have both quarters replaced on the car. Josh and Bruce have been knocking those out. And there are also a few more modifications towards the front of the vehicle that they made so we'll kind of walk that way and talk about it but the quarters are on and they look great and then up front we have some closeouts that Josh and Bruce had taken care of closed out the AC and heater panel for the firewall put a nice little b-roll panel on there over on the driver's side we had shown there was a little hole in this area and now Bruce is working on repairing that we have a patch panel and of course, we're gonna end up cutting this tunnel out for the T56, so at least getting the floor pan patched up, and then he'll move on and start working on the tunnel shortly after that. Another part to note that along with the quarter panels, the rear cowl panel was also replaced. We had shown there were some holes in that as well. So that part has been welded in. Everything's been attached to the roof. So as far as body work on this vehicle, we're getting pretty close. On um, Chris's Daytona, Mark is still working on the tunnel. Everything needs to go up for the drive line on this vehicle since we're gonna have such a low ride height. Now towards the back, he put in this brace and then there's gonna be a little more room back there for the center section on the axle. So this part's gonna be clearance for the drive shaft and then a little bit of room for the center section as well. So Mark's making very good progress on that. In a couple of weeks, we'll walk back through the shop and you know, talk to the guys a little more and see what else they're working on and what other directions they have to go with each build. But like I mentioned, today's just gonna be a short walkthrough, a quick video. So if you like videos like this, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to our channel. And every week or every couple of weeks, we'll be sure to give you more updates on what's going on in the shop. And be sure to also check us out on social media. So thank you guys for tuning in and I hope you have a great day.